In recent times, there has been a lot of talk about psychopathic killers going on rampages, and then the aftermath, people find all the crazy stuff they were posting on YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram. But this is honestly not a new occurrence. In fact, killers have been posting on the internet for many years now. And today, I want to talk about a very early occurrence of this, which is Mr. Anime. It seems like our society has a morbid fascination with killers. There's just something about wondering what goes on in their heads that makes you want to know every detail about them. In the past, observers relied on police reports and journalists to provide information about those behind heinous crimes. But in the 21st century, we now have an unprecedented look at what makes them tick through their internet life. In 2005, this in-depth look into people's lives went even further when YouTube was created. It made internet videos accessible to millions of new people sparking the imagination of many adolescents. One such aspiring filmmaker was a young man named Trey Sessler, who would go on to be known as the first YouTube killer. So let's take a look at his career to see if there were any signs of a downward spiral. At the age of 17, he created his YouTube channel, LensCat Productions. Like many at the time, he was interested in getting in on the ground floor of this virgining new medium. On the same day he created his channel, Sessler uploaded his first video titled, The Renters. A short comedy sketch about a landlord played by Sessler trying to collect rent from a group of bizarre roommates. It's interesting to note that one of the characters in this sketch is constantly brandishing a gun, perhaps being the earliest known example of Sessler's interest in firearms. The sketch itself was about the level of quality one would expect from videos of the era, and otherwise completely harmless. Sessler would continue to upload these sketches and shorts for a little over a year, until his focus slowly shifted to action films. He didn't seem too concerned about telling a cohesive story in these new uploads, but instead used the medium as a way to make fight scenes involving either swords or guns. His fascination with gore was evident in a tutorial on how to make a fake gunshot wound. Eventually, Mr. Sessler's interest expanded yet again, when he made a video announcing that his content would be making a pivot. The next day, he would upload the first episode of his new anime review series, in which he took the pseudonym Mr. Anime. For these reviews, Sessler would get increasingly angry at the subject matter being reviewed, often lashing out. While Trey would continue to upload scripted shorts every so often, the Mr. Anime series became the main focus on his channel, and he began to build up a following. Over time, he branched out into more opinion-based videos. Probably the most noteworthy of these is one titled, My Thoughts on Neats, uploaded in 2012. For those who don't know, NEAT is an acronym for Not in Education, Employment, or Training. Basically, it's a term for a young person who is unemployed and not in school, and could be considered in some ways a precursor to incels. In this video, Sessler says that while he has no quote-unquote real job and was not enrolled in college, he does not consider himself a NEAT as he was doing YouTube full-time. I think this video is important for showing exactly what point in his life Sessler was at at the time. So what I'm trying to get at is, I don't think that needs are losers, but I think there's a large majority of needs that is out there, they're working from home like I am, they're trying to make it, they're trying to do something with the talent that they want to do. Around this same era, Trey announced that he had been diagnosed with pneumothorax, a buildup of air between the lung and the chest wall. According to Sessler, this gave him frequent shortness of breath and caused him to lose a significant amount of sleep. It is widely known that insomnia can lead to physical and mental side effects, with many of his subscribers being worried for his well-being. From there, things only became weirder, until Mr. Anime would go completely off the deep end. We'll find out more about this after a word from our sponsor. A short time after Trey announced his health problems, he released a very strange video entitled, Mr. Anime is Planning Something. In it, he never actually says what he's planning, only that he's going to take a three-week break from YouTube in order to reward himself. I want to thank you guys a lot for sticking with me and watching the channel. Uh, I got more subscribers than ever. In hindsight, this video was especially unsettling. But at the time, it didn't seem like that because after the break, he came back in a chipper mood, announcing to his subscribers that he had gotten a full-time job working in film, and it would mark the bookend of a chapter to his life. While assuring fans he would continue making online content, there is a very noticeable tone of finality to this video. 
Little did his subscribers know the dark turn this story would take next. Only a week after announcing gainful employment, on March 20th, 2012, Trey Sessler's parents and brother were found murdered in their home, their bodies riddled with bullets. He had first lured his mother into the garage where she was executed, before carrying out the same fate for the other two in his household. The home itself was torn apart, and on the walls were written several messages of regret, such as, I love my mom, dad, and brother, why did I do this, and God forgive me because I cannot forgive myself. After writing out these phrases, he headed down to Waller High School during a crowded homecoming football game. With an assault rifle in his hand and 100 rounds of ammunition, he set the goal of killing at least 70 in attendance. Fortunately, Trey backed out of his planned rampage at the very last minute, and instead went to a friend's house and confessed everything he had done. At the time of his arrest, Sessler had a gun on his person, another stashed in his car, and more in his home. In the months leading up to the killing, Sessler reportedly showed signs of disturbed behavior. Apparently, he would spend hours online researching serial killers and mass shooters in order to grade their work. Additionally, he would also go out in the night to start fires, shoot at buildings, and even kill pets. He also engaged in drug use, although the extent of which is unclear. On top of all this, Sessler simply felt an overwhelming sense of isolation. During an interrogation from law enforcement, Sessler explained why he killed his family. He was first and foremost planning on carrying out the mass shooting at the nearby high school, and he didn't want his mother, father, and brother to live in shame of him. In a blood-curdling conversation he had with detectives, Sessler was reportedly very curious as to how exactly each one of his family members died, politely asking law enforcement which wounds had been the killing blows. In the aftermath, fellow YouTuber and friend of Trey, The Hard Mode, spoke out about what had occurred telling how surprised he was about the recent events. Now I just want to say that I have a giant amount of respect for Trey as an anime reviewer and as a person, but after reading the news article on the internet, I have to admit, I just don't know what to think about him anymore. With all the evidence the courts needed, in August of 2012, Trey Sessler was sentenced to life in prison without parole, and remains behind bars to this very day. This was the end of a dark chapter in YouTube history, and the beginning of a new, less innocent era of online video. After the fact, a lot of people went through all his old videos to see if there was any sign that this was going to happen. But it should be noted that even with the evidence people have brought forward that this was going to occur, hindsight is 2020. And with that thought, I think I'll end the video here. So until next time, thanks for watching.